okay, so here it is. So Cactus album comes out. Right. right. And people on the West Coast loved it. Like, we just played one time, gaffled them up, and right. MC8 says, I was in my car bumping the Cactus. Right. Mm -hmm. Album was huge on the West Coast. There was a verse on the album, on the song called The Cactus. Okay. That Pete Nice says, the cactus turned Hammer's mother out. Oh, Okay. Now the line was a creative line because yeah. his album was called Turn, Turn His Mother Out. Yeah. And our album was called The Cactus. Right. So we were saying our album was doper, but we were saying it in New York slick shit. Like right. we had some slick talk coming out our mouth. Right. Mm -hmm. Hammer thought we were talking about us fucking his mom. Oh. oh. Yeah. So <laughs> we have this big event all planned at the Palace in LA. Uh -huh. We're giving away a Jeep on K Day, which was the first you know, hip hop station right. ever play twenty four hour hip hop. That's right. And we're ex I've never been to LA. So I'm taking a wife. I got Chantel with me. Pete got his girl with him. Rich got his girl with him. Like we're excited. Like we're going to LA. Like this is a big movement. This is gonna be a movie. Right. We're in the air. And Carmen Ashurst Watson, who was the president of Def Jam at the time, picks up the phone <clears throat> and hears somebody say, uh, is third base on their way to LA? And she goes, yeah. And the boy says, good, they're dead. This is Louis Burrell. And hangs up. Wow. What the fuck? So um, Carmen didn't know what to make of it. So she was like, who can we call internally at Def Jam that might know about this or rush? So they called Eric B. Right. And Eric B basically puts a feeler out and finds out it's true. Mm -hmm. That there's a hit out on third base with mm -hmm. the Crips. So... We're in the air now. So now, Def Jam has three hours and change to defuse this, or we'll never make it out of the airport. Wow. Because, again, the, the, there was no security. You could walk to the gate. Yeah, yeah that's that, right. That's right. right. You could walk to the <laughs> gate. That's right. You could walk so all the way to the gate. We would never make it out the gate, because the, the hit was for $50,000. Wow. Shit. Um, so we're in the air, and... Our plane's going to land in three hours, and they have to defuse this. So they find out that the person that's in charge of the hit is this guy, Mike Conception. Yeah, Mike Conception in a wheelchair. Right. Yeah, my man. What's so, up, Mike? Yeah, I love Mike. Um, I love, I really, <laughs> after, I this love story, after the story, you really <laughs> understand why I love Mike. Like, but I love fuck? Mike. So they call Mike, and they say to Mike, listen, you know, are you in charge? He goes, yeah, I'm in charge, but don't worry. We're not going to kill them. We'll just break their legs so they could still shoot television from the waist up. Wow. wow. <clears throat> and they're like, no, that, that can't happen. You know, how do we defuse this? And he says, well, tonight's the American Music Awards, and um, I want to sit next to Michael Jackson. If you can make me sit next to Michael Jackson, then I will, I will do my best to stop the hit. Now, you're talking about 50,000 gang members in L.A. Right. Wow. But he says, I'll, I'll, I'll stop the hit. And also, I got this record I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to get a label for it, this whole thing about rappers coming together. We're all in the same gang. But I don't have a label, so maybe, Russell, you can help us get the record on a, con on a sign. Right. So Russell calls Donnie Einer, who is the president of Columbia, and says, I need your tickets for the American Music Awards. Don't ask me why, I just, I need your tickets. Right. And Donnie says... Yeah, okay. You know, if it, it's, he, he said it was important, life and death. Right. Right. So if you look at the 1990 American Music Awards, when Michael Jackson is winning all those awards, there's a guy in a wheelchair sitting right next to him. Wow. So Shit. we're now in the air, and we're about to land, and we're getting out of the gate. And as we get out of the gate, there's these six huge dudes who throw a black cloak over us, and all I hear is, move, 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 everybody out of the way, move, move, move. And I look over to my wife, who's tucked under this, and, I go, and I'm looking at her, and I go, Oh my God, we're bigger than the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> we are the yeah. biggest fucking <laughs> 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 And they run us into this black fan. Heads down! Keep your heads down! And I'm like, oh my God. When did you find out about the hit? So we get to the hotel. We get to the Hollywood Hyatt. Right. And they've got an entire floor booked out. No, nobody. The only people that had rooms on the floor was me, Pete, and Rich. Wow, that was it. I mean, had security at the elevator, and then Uncle Mel, Mel Swint, who was my uh, the security that had a security, 
says to me, this is what's going on, this is your itinerary, everything's changed, da 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 Right. About ten minutes later, this thin guy comes up, he's about your height, but this thin, named Pookie. <laughs> and Pookie was a lieutenant, one of Mike's lieutenants. And he was going to stay on my side the whole time we were there, third base's side. Right. He was going to stay on our side, people are already texting, it's funny. All right, so <laughs> I, being the slick talk kid from Queens, I'm like, this is some bullshit, man. I want to go to the fucking mall. Right. I want to go to the Beverly Center. I heard a lot about the Beverly. I want to take my wife shopping. I want to take her to Louis Vuitton. Right. And Mel's like, no. You, and Pookie was like, no, 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 no. Let's take search to the Beverly Center. Right. Let's, oh, let's go. So we get in Mel's truck. And we go to the Beverly Center, and Pookie's right next to me, and my wife is with me. And the Beverly Center, there's this terrace. There's like three floors, and then there's yeah. this yeah, terrace. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And that's where the sneaker spot was, right, and yeah. the, the sushi place was. And he's like, oh, Pookie goes, oh, some girls, are, they notice you. Why don't you go down there and go sign some autographs? I'm like, you motherfucking right, I'm going to sign some autographs. Right, right? <laughs> some fine LA chicks. Honey, I love you, but I'm going to go do yeah, me. Let me right. do me. So I come down, the girls start checking me out, and I'm starting to sign some autographs, and I notice, I notice some dudes, and I'm like, oh, cool, people are coming around. Notice a couple more dudes. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm signing autographs. All of a sudden, I look at this dude. He's pulling up a blue rag. This dude's pulling up a blue rag. He's oh, going like this. And then I hear a whistle. Like, you know, I can't do it, but right. a whistle. And I hear Pookie scream, hey. And these dudes look up. He throws up signs. And then they pull down their rags and they go, yo, dog, I'm sorry. I was going to kill you, but yo. Oh, oh shit. shit. Whoa. I'm a big fan, and wow. I'm like, and the urine just starts flowing. Wow. <laughs> and my wow. wife is in tears, and I'm like, yo, I, this shit is serious. So yes. you, you didn't know that whole time that they were going to come get you like that? Hell no. I, I mean, they told me there was a hit out on me. You I thought, thought it was bullshit. You, know, you didn't take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah come on. Wow. I'm from New York, kid. Yeah. Like, I don't know about gangs. Like, right, what the fuck right. are you talking about? Hey. This is wow. some old, some fantasy shit. This is colors. This is the movie. Right. Is, nah, it's for real. It, no, it's... It's real. <laughs> this dude was five feet from smoking me. It was wow. real. <laughs> so we're locked down in our hotel, and the next morning we had to be on K-Day in the morning to uh -huh. give away this Jeep, this property of the environment Jeep. So we're on with Greg Mack, the Mack Attack, yes. which was the morning show. That's right. Lisa Canning was his news person. And it was the Monday after the American Music Awards. So we get in, we're doing our interview, everything's going great, we're about to pull the name, and he goes, oh, we got a special guest on the phone live from the American Music Awards, winning five American Music Awards, MC Hammer's on the phone. Wow. Holy shit. And I'm like, I literally, literally, I'm like, this motherfucker just set us up. Right. And Hammer gets on, and he's a little groggy, and Greg Mack's like, Oh, my man, Hammer, you know, congratulations. Yeah, man, thank you, thank you. I know you got a special message for, like, third base. And Hammer goes, Well, you know, I don't, you know, I don't appreciate you dissing my mom, and this and that. And I'm, like, slick talking again. I'm like, look, we didn't diss your matriarchal. Nobody's talking about your matriarchal. If you feel that way, that's you. Why don't you come see me, you bitch? And Greg Max like, no, 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 no. Hey, I'm like, no, you a bitch too. He's a bitch. You a bitch. <laughs> oh, Let's go God. to the phones. Let's go to the phones. Let's see who likes who Woo! more. Third base a hammer. Go to the phones. What's the number, bitch? And Greg Max like, don't say that to me again. I'm like, get out the number. So he gives out the number. Goes to line one. Line one is like, yo, I love third base. Searching those dudes. I love those dudes. Next caller. Oh, I love Hammer. Third base is whack. I love Hammer. Next caller. I love third base. Da 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 da. Next caller. Rolling sixty crip. We coming. To boop boop. All right, everybody out. <laughs> everybody out. Wow. Roll out. Wow. Man. Get, we run out. And now K Day was on a mountain. It was on a dirt hill. Right. There was only one way up and one way down. And it was an AM station. And we're, we're in the black van, we're going down, and there's two 65s. And this dude pulls wow. out a, a Mac 11, another dude, and, there, and Pookie choppers. jumps up, choppers. And, Ma and Pookie, Pookie <laughs> comes out the van, <laughs> throws up the signs, dudes get in their cars, they disappear. Wow. wow. So that night was our album release party at the Palace. Right. And we're talking to Search. If y'all, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. All right, go this ahead. This is search. MC Search, and yeah. I'm talking about how Hammer tried to kill me. Yeah, this is great. So, um, 
So Leo had a dude that was down with him named Big D. Yes. So the so Big D flies out behind us and stays on Mike Conception's hip the whole time to make sure that he's living up to his work. Okay. I had to I had to preface that by saying that it's important to the story. So that night is the palace party and they're like, yo, there's no way. All right, so we had two close calls. There's no way we're going to be able to stop a bunch of dudes at a party. How are we going to do that, you know, mm -hmm. the right. whole thing? They put up metal detectors, the whole thing, the whole nine. Big D's with my conception. They're in the studio, and they're doing the We All Insane Game record. Uh -huh. And Hammer walks in. Okay. Oh, and Hammer goes, Mike, uh, mind if I talk to you for a second? And Mike's like, yeah, no problem. And Big D walks in because Hammer doesn't know Big D's with him. Right. And my conception says, what's up? And Hammer goes, why aren't they dead yet? And Mike's like, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and Hammer's like, and he's like, and if anything happens to them, I'm going to kill your mother, your father, your family, your brother. Now get in there and fucking do your verse and shut the fuck up. Straight like that. Straight like that. <laughs> yeah, and Hammer does his verse. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out how we're going to get to the palace. Fox 5 was recording it. MTV's recording How we're going to... We decide we're going to disguise ourselves as security guards. <laughs> Me, Pete, what? and Rich are wearing security, blue security guard with vests, uh -huh. and they're nothing but blue cars circling the palace. Right. We sneak in as security. We get in there. NWA's in there. MC8 is in there. We're having a great time. And I'm just seeing Pookie running through the audience doing this. Gang signs, gang signs, gang signs, gang signs. Blah, 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 blah. He's running, he's running, he's running, he's running, he's running. He's running. We get on stage, we do our thing, we go home, and we avoid getting killed. And that's why that I'm is one of the that's greatest crazy. fucking stories I have ever heard Amazing. in my life. Thank you, MC Search. Wow.